Hello everybody and welcome back to Tales of Trujia, Campaign 3, Episode 1. Due to some complications with video footage, my part will not be in the video, but you can still hear me and follow along, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you for your continued support. Hello, and welcome back everybody to Tales of Trujia, Campaign 3, The Shadow of Tythair. Our setting opens up in the year 2250 after Unity. Trusia prospers under the rule of King Menelidas Arendu, and the sights of destiny hone in on three unlikely adventurers amidst the new cycle celebrations in the Arthurian capital of New Methlos. Nate, we will start with you. You don't have to introduce me. What do I do? You're just on your own. Oh, okay. Yeah. What am I doing there? You're just I'm, you're just in the festival. In the festival? Yep. Do I say what I do? Yeah, you can go anywhere you want. Hmm. I'm going to look for the closest tavern, and I'm going to try to find some quick gold, so to speak, from all the drunkards at the bar. Yeah, so give me um, a perception check on the area around you. Got a 19. Looking around, there are several uh, tents of various natures. You have one tent that's just kind of like a dagger throwing competition. You have a tent that's like a kind of like a strongman competition. Everyone's in their arm wrestling, just you know, trying to prove which one's the strongest. And there are two or three tents that are drinking competitions. I'm gonna sneak my way over to the drinking competitions, and uh, I'm just gonna look around and see who I can find. Maybe I can find. Somebody of interest. Okay, give me another. Give me an investigation check. Investigation. Intelligence. <laughs> Three plus. I got a six. <laughs> so no, no one too interesting. But as you as you kind of look around, you do notice that the lowmen inside this tent they seem to huddle together and they they seem to drink together and there doesn't really seem to be any other goblins just around mm. and we'll hold your turn there jacob we come to you sitting at a drinking table in one of the circus tents you know always always vigilant always just kind of watching out you're drinking but you haven't really lost your wits yet and through the far flap of the of the drinking tent you see a small goblin into the tent. <laughs> Goblins. Nasty little buggers. I'd like to toss my chair at him. <laughs> okay, give me give me a ranged attack throw. <clears throat> Eight. That's your armor class? <clears throat> uh sixteen. So that does not hit. Instead, you pick your chair up from where you're drinking, and you toss it. And about halfway through the room, it clips one guy in the head, and it hits the ground and busts, causing a waitress to drop a bunch of beer onto the ground, and there seem to be a lot of very angry patrons now. I forgot to mention that as I'm throwing the chair, I holler, GOBLIN! <laughs> okay, you hear, you hear him yell, Goblin, and... Well, what can I do for you? Oh, you and me. We've got some business to discuss. Okay, what can I do for you? Your death. That's what I want. Okay, we might be able to arrange that. How much gold do you have? <laughs> I don't think you understand. I don't need gold. As, as you're saying this, the man who, who you clipped with the chair throws a wild haymaker at you. Okay. As he's standing up. That is a 16. That's a hit. <laughs> Can I, can I roll to punch said dude in the, uh, the groin area? Give me one second. Let me finish this. So that's going to be four points of damage as his fist just connects across your chin. And um, it does stagger you a little bit, but but nothing too serious. And yes, you, you may do what you want to do now. So I rolled a 12. To hit the, to hit the guy? Yeah, in the groin. Yeah, that'll, that'll pass. Okay. So roll your damage. It'll be a, oh, it'll be a D four. Yeah. 
Yep. Got a one. Plus your strength modifier. Uh, I don't have a strength modifier. <clears throat> My strength is. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you run up and you just you punch him and you punch him in the groin real quick, and, and it hurts, but it's more he's taken aback, like what? As you <laughs> as you punch him in the groin, and he kind of steps back, knocking another waitress um, down. And the tray of beer that she has spills on top of you, Matthew. I'll just remove myself from the situation. You it's become too crowded. You just get up and leave? Okay. <laughs> what a Matt response. <laughs> so what are you doing, Jacob? I don't need your filthy help, goblin, as I too swing at this man. <laughs> 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 uh... 19. That will hit. <laughs> and then let's see here. An unarmed strike will be a d4. Right. Four plus three, seven <laughs> damage. Yeah, so he's still kind of just staring at the goblin who just, you know, ran up and tapped him in the balls with his fist. <laughs> and uh, you come over with a wild haymaker and you just knock him out with one temple strike right there. Sack tap. <laughs> I'd like to look over at Jacob and say, well, I think this accounts for a drink. Never drank with the likes of you. You and your filthy kind. <laughs> well, we'll see what you say to this. Marky, give me three pitchers. You're destroying my board! <laughs> well, you could focus on that. Or, my lad here could win that drinking competition you're having and use the money for the repairs for your bar. Give <laughs> me persuasion check. Hey. He's starting to kind of come around to the idea, but he's not quite there yet. You're gonna have to show him you can drink, lad. Don't call me. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have any money, so I'll have to agree as well. Maybe we can make an arrangement here. And he hands, um, he hands a tankard of ale to one of the waitresses and brings it to you. He says, show me what you can do. I mean, I drink it. Just down it. Give me a persuasion check. Fifteen. Yep. He is thoroughly convinced that you can win this competition. As he starts settling the people back down into their chairs and he brings two chairs and adds it onto the table where the drinking competition is taking place. And he puts his hand on the shoulder of the goblin. He says, you're not out of it yet. And he sits him in one of the chairs and you in one of the other chairs. Oh, I wouldn't imagine to be. Would you like to make it fancy? What do you have in mind? If he beats any opponent that you put up against him, you also you owe us drinks all six months for the next year round. This tent won't even be a thing in six months. It's here for the festival. Where's your tavern? I wouldn't tell you that, not knowing that information. <laughs> uh. Matthew, we will transition. Where have you gone? Um, so, Matt, you go where? What is the time of day? Just becoming evening. Mm -hmm. Evening starts at five. Yeah, I should say that the sun is, is at low set right now. Because the festival doesn't really come to life until it... It's pretty dark. I just start adventuring about on top of myself. Okay, going any specific location? I'm wondering. Okay, how about you give me a uh, investigation check? Eleven. As you're just venturing on your own, you come to a square little area where there are several magicians of a sort is doing magic. Some of them are shooting fire in their hands and quickly putting a water spell into it to create just crazy amounts of mist. And other ones are manipulating water and, and fire into animals. And you're just here and you're kind of looking around at what's going on there. I'd like to approach one of them. Is there any that stands out to me as being exceptional? 
I would say one with kind of a, a bald head, a unibrow, and a mischievous goatee. Stands above the rest, but compared to what you're used to seeing in the Elven Vale, none of them are really spectacular. Then I'll just observe. Back to you all. So, a tankard. Tankards are sit, sat in front of you all, respectively. As you drink them, I want you all to give me a performance check on the first round of peace. Oh, I'm in the contest? Yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Seven. Four. Seven. You drink your first, um, you drink your first round of ale, and you're just immediately like... It's a lot stouter than, than what you're used to drinking. Well, yeah, I'm from the slums. Yeah. That makes sense. And you seem to take it the best out of everybody at the competition. Another round of tanker just sat in front of you. Roll again. Seven. Two. At this point, you're getting woozy off of these, off of the two tankers you've had. You're starting to feel it, Jacob, as one of the people sitting next to you, we'll say the, the Loman on your left-hand side, just seems to be outpacing the competition. Another tanker just sat in front of you. Matt, 20. 18. So, as you're drinking, the man who seemed confident before kind of slumps out of his chair. Um, you similarly follow suit. You're just a little... A little off, and the goblin seems to have come out of the home stretch as he wins the drinking competition in the tavern tent. Okay, so does it pan over to me now? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'd like to look at the barkeep and give him the money that I just got. So you're giving him his own money back? Well, yeah, so I could use to pay for the uh, pay for the damages. Okay. He accepts it and says, A goblin of your word? That's a little unheard of. And then I'll say, Yes, sir, it is. But, would you like to sit and have a drink with me? Aye, I would. Okay. Give yourself two reputation points. Two reputation points? What are those? Just ride right them on anywhere on your sheet. I might lose those here in a minute. <laughs> Go ahead. With whatever you want to do, Jacob. I, I just, I grumble. <laughs> Very dissatisfied with the situation. So Be as... My goblin. As we're drinking, I'm going to try to slip my hand <laughs> to, <laughs> to the coin pouch and take the money I just gave him. Okay, oh gosh. Give me a slot of hand check. Is that a stealth? No, it'll say on your skill sheet. It'll say slot of hand. Oh. And then add whatever is beside that. Well, it's, it was already added. It got an eight. So he's he's as soon as your little goblin hand slips into where his coin purse is, he just kind of grabs your hand and sits it on the table, and he said, "Now don't become a goblin that doesn't keep his word." I was just trying to scratch your leg there, lad. <laughs> Give me a charisma check. No, a charisma check. Oh, God. <laughs> Four. I know what you were doing. Now, have your drinks and be off. I'll slam my drink and head out of the tent. Okay, lose your two points. Matthew? Is there anything significant going on around me? Nothing other than the magical stuff that was happening before. I mean, there's there's groups of kids flooding into the. I'm not much of a festival person. I don't care for all this coming. I'd like to take a stroll through the woods. You have to go all the way outside town to take a stroll through the woods. Okay, you start making your way outside of the town, um, and as you're as you're doing that. You just kind of to the corner of your eye, you notice the bald-headed magician is kind of packing up. He's packing his stand up. Jacob will pan back to you. Because I'm still at the table, right? 
<sighs> I would like to punch the guy at the the guy with the coin purse and try to take it and run. <laughs> <laughs> you walk up and he says, "Oh, can I help you?" I don't even know what that would. I guess I don't even know. Yeah, so three. I don't. Six. Six. So you throw a punch at him, and he just kind of so blocks it in, <laughs> blocks it in front of his face. He said, "A goblin and one of my own kind on the same day." And he throws your hand back to you. He snaps his fingers, and two of his sons, who are much broader than he is, they come out of kind of the serving area of the tent, and they grab a hold of you. So I'm gonna do a grappling check against your armor class. That is 16 for one of your arms in grapples. And a nine for the other. So you currently have one arm. You have one arm that one one of his sons is holding one of your arms. And with the other one, you've pulled away. Well, I guess I'm going to try to clock the son that's got my <laughs> arm. Uh, 15, 18. 18? 18, that'll do it. Roll your damage. I don't really want to do any damage. I just want him to let go. <laughs> uh, six. Six. Yeah, so you you come over and you hit him right on the on the collarbone where his neck meets his collarbone, and he's just kind of like, <laughs> and he he lets go of your arm. I'm gonna take out of the tent. He's just gonna take off. I'm gonna take, take off, off out of the yeah, tent. Yeah, so you take off running. <laughs> you get outside. And you just kind of disappear in the crowd, and um, you kind of notice over your shoulders the sun's come out of the tent, and they're just looking around trying to see which way you went. Hmm. I. Can't. I guess I need to get out of town. So I start heading out of town too. And you? Mm -hmm. You slammed your drink down and you left the tent. There's still a festival going on, right? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. You can use cantrips how often? Whenever. I'd like to use a cantrip of a cloak of night and go to the closest stall to me and try to uh just just completely clear them out of everything they got okay yeah so there's a there's several stalls near you you have a kind of like a firework stall near you right now you have a jewelry stall near you right now but it seems a little bit more secure than you know a firework stall would be and then there's a food vendor near you i'll go food vendor <laughs> okay so you I'm a kinda, goblin. You sneak up, just kind of staying around the kneecaps of the crowd, and you look, and you realize he's selling, you know, just whole chicken legs out mm -hmm. of out of his vendor stall. Um, he's got the stall set up in one area, and he's kind of got a makeshift grill in the back, and the food seems to be going from the grill to the counter. Does he have any sacks where he's been selling food all day? Um, yeah, he's got a got a little coin coffer on the on top of the counter near the uh, serving area. I'd like to grab a sack and fill it full of chicken legs from the grill. Okay, so give me a stealth check at advantage. That one, baby. What's well, at advantage? Um, you get to roll again. Oh, roll again. 15 plus 6, so 21. Yeah, so at first you kind of stumble, and then you get your bearings, and you just kind of disappear in the shadows. And as he's putting a leg on the grill, you're reaching over top and pulling it off and, and putting it into a sack. And he's just very baffled as he's looking, and he puts another leg on, and you're like, and so, put it down to his sack. So I'm going to go for the coin purse, and then I'm going to dart. Okay. I got a 13. With your modifiers included? Yeah, off one roll. Yeah, he's kind of just baffled. He's he's baffled by the fact of where the chicken's going, so he's more he's worried, worried about, about the, the chicken. chicken. And you're able to just walk up, grab it off the top, and throw it in your sack with with partially cooked <clears throat> chicken legs. So with that, I would like to take off looking for the uh, the lowman that helped me get out of my endeavor at the bar. Okay. Um. Let's do an investigation check and see if you can find any way to try. 18 plus investigation, 3, so 21. 
Yeah, so he just, uh, he, he like kind of brushes past you and you just barely notice him as he starts walking past you. You follow like, the line behind him. I'd like to throw a chicken leg at him and go, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> give me a range spell, att- or, or, give me a range attack. I'm not, I'm not attack. I don't want him to hurt him. I just want to get his attention. Okay, so you'll just do that. Just you'll, So you're not going to do any damage. You yeah. just do it to see if it hits him or you see where it's going to go. Yeah. 11. Plus your dexterity. Oh shit, plus deck, so 15. 15? That doesn't quite do it. And you throw it and it brushes right past his head and you see a partially grilled but mostly raw chicken leg just come hurriedly behind your head as you hear, Wow, man! From behind you. How, obviously, I turn around and look. How much money did I make from robbing that, uh, that vendor? Mm, you made about 25 gold pieces. I'd like to give him five pieces and a half grilled chicken leg and say, Well, I don't expect to make this stuff make you like me, but I'd say we're square. Mm. Or I could take it all. Well, you could. Or I could disappear. I go to grab him. Okay. Go ahead. Roll the grappling. Nat twenty. Nat twenty. Yes, so you sir. go to you go to escape from it real quick. He just grabs you up by the collar of your shirt. Uh, um, let's see here. Do you say anything to him when you grab him? Like I'll be taking that. And I reach to grab the coin purse. Oh, right in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, roll for it. Poke in the eyes. Uh, six plus what would it be? Uh, for that, let's do dexterity. So it'd be, it'd be ten. Ten? Yeah. So you don't poke him in the eyes, but you get him, like, right on the corners. Does he let go? Uh, give me a constitution saving throw. Well, plus constitution. Thirteen. <laughs> Thirteen? Hmm. Yeah, I'd say that he does not let go from that, <laughs> from that right there. Um, he, if anything, you just pissed him. You really, really pissed him off. What are you doing? I'm trying to make it right. Why do you keep talking to me? What is your obsession with me? Just figured I'd help you out. You helped me. I hate you. I hate your kind. I have no desire to talk to you or even be around you. Not very fond of humans either, but you did help me. Not on purpose, I can assure you, I would never help a goblin. I, I probably wouldn't have liked it either. I would have liked to have had a better night. Um, because I got a hold of it. Just, did you, what, what did you roll? For the grab? I never done it out for the grab. I don't think I ever did. Well, okay, we'll roll at a bang. Seven. Yeah, so as you're... As you got him held up and you release with one hand to kind of go for the coin purse, he's kind of <laughs> shimmy in the way to where you can't get to the coin purse on his side, which probably irritates you just as much as being poked right here. And uh, let's pause that there for a minute. Matthew. As I noticed the bald man packing up, I would like to cast Animorph and turn into an eagle. Okay. So right in the middle of this crowd of chill, right in the middle of this crowd of children, he he's packing his stall up, and you know you just start your body starts shrinking. At first, well you didn't declare that, so um, at first these kids are like, ah! your body starts shrinking, and eventually you're like, ah! as an eagle. It does catch the bald man's attention, but he seems to think it's coming from one of the other vendors and not from you. That's okay. I, my aim was just to tail it as it leaves. Okay. And he's got his got a little box from the side of his cart where he's recently closed up. And he takes off down one of the back alleys. By tailing from above. Okay. Yeah. So you're just flying above him, watching as he makes right turns, left turns, trying to trying to just you know outsmart or or get away from anybody who might be, you know, following him. And he kind of does a circle. And he comes back and he's looking out of one of the alleyways onto one of the street corners. And you notice from above the goblin and the loman that 
cause the drinks to be spilled on you, are now in a full confrontation with the crowd starting to gather around them in the street. The bald man kind of makes his way into the crowd and he start to, starts to get muddled in with many of the other people there. I'd like to land on a rooftop to observe from a distance. Okay. So yeah, you perch down on one of the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, you perch down on, on one of the nearby roofs and you just start watching. And that brings us back to you two. What clan are you from, Goblin? I don't belong to one. I'm from the slums in Fort Town. No clan, eh? Have you heard of any Goblin clan? No, sir. My family was killed in the slums. I'm the only one alive. Tis why I don't like humans very much. I was just trying to make things right. Useless. And I drop him. Yeah. You drop him to mix to, uh, to a, the sound, a mixed sound of the crowd going, Aww. <laughs> they thought they were about to get to see a fox. You're gonna draw my Clayton. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And they're like, yeah! And you draw your Claymore. Hold and it. I just want to place it next to his neck. Okay. I'd, I'd like to use my cantrip cloak of night and just disappear into the crowd. Yeah, so whenever you pull your claymore and you go to, to put it towards the goblin, all you see is a little shadow scurry, scurry around, scurry across the ground into the crowd. I'd like to spit on the dirt and just go, <laughs> goblins. And Matthew, you also noticed the goblin do some kind of weird shadow magic that you've never seen before. Intrigued by this, am I able to trail him based off the magic path? Not with these. You could try to add. Um, you could try to add disadvantage. You roll twice and you take the bottom number. Neither one was good. So what would that be on my... Sorry, uh, investigate. Oh, five. Yeah, so you, you try, but there's too many shadows on the ground for you to really make out which one you need to follow. And uh, you've also seemingly lost track of the mage that was that you were originally tailing. Anything else you would like to do? How is that? I, mean, I don't even know what you're doing. How is that my fault? I don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Nope. Well, that'll be it. Hmm. I decide it's time to find something to do besides drink and piddle around with trash goblins. So I'm like, I need to find some money. Got to find a job to do. Somebody was offering him something. <laughs> I go to a, I assume there's a bounty guild about, possibly a wanted poster or something. Not a bounty guild in the capital. They try to keep the guild business outside of the capital city. Um, but, I mean, theoretically you could attempt to win any of the various competitions that are happening around the fair. I guess I'll go to the arm wrestling competition. Okay, yeah, that's what I do. So I, he I head to the arm wrestling competition. And you you uh, sit down, and uh, across from you sits down what looks to be like a, an Arthurian royal soldier. He's kind of off-duty. He's somewhat clean-cut, and he's got the kind of tunic that the soldiers would wear in their free time. And the officiant for the competition puts both your arms on the table. You grasp, and the efficient says three, two, one, go. And give me a strength check. Nineteen. He gives a little bit of resistance, and you just bam, and slam his arm down as the next patron sits down. Anything you want to change? Maybe change your arms, change your grip, anything like that? Hmm. No. 
Uh, let's see here. It doesn't really help me with much, but I would like to say, well, I should probably use my athletics. Wouldn't I? Well, it's a combination. That can be a combination depending on what you say. You want. I would like to go into like an actual arm wrestling competition, like you know how they try to twist the wrist and wrench it down in that sort of style, not necessarily whatever is best for the situation. Like how it's it's hard to describe because like different competitors fight different. So how whatever the best way to fight against it would be is the tactic I would take. Okay. Okay. So as the next competitor sits down, he locks your hands in and um, the officiant gives you the countdown again. He says, go, however. As you, um, as you start to do your pulling, you just hear a subtle noise and then a sharp pain in your leg as the competitor across from you has slipped a boot knife into your calf and is slowly wiggling it around to try to get you to lose your grip. Um, so, give me your strength roll at uh, disadvantage. Okay. So, I'm just using pure strength, right? Okay, so... Yeah. Um, I got a 13 and a 14 for my strength. Adding your modifier? No, it is okay, not. Okay, add your modifier. So, so it's, it's a 16, 16 and a 17. Okay, and now your athletics to turn his wrist. 17, 17 plus five. five. Yeah, so even despite his attempts to cheat, you're able to just barely fight him down to the table as he gets up as if nothing happened, as if he had not shanked you with a boot knife or anything and goes to walk away. I grab his shoulder. <laughs> Turn him around. Okay. Yeah, he spins around and says, What? You think you could get away with that? Away with what? The, the knife in my leg. What do you mean, what? My hands were up here, there, and he looks to the officiant, and the officiant comes over. Gentlemen, gentlemen, what is the issue? What is the issue here? I'm like, look at the hole in my leg. That was not there when I sat down. And, you know what? Give me a persuasion check. Uh, it's just nat one. I wouldn't know if that hole was there or not. You won. Why would you even... Why would you cause trouble? Even I would like, like to memorize, memorize this guy's face. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah, I just didn't know if you wanted to respond to... No, I think uh, we'll come back for that one later. I'm like, you know what? You're right. I did win. We'll just let it go. And I'll watch where the guy goes once, you know, where does he go? Does he leave the tent? Does he go to the bar? Yeah. Uh, he just kind of... Are you talking about the guy who stabbed you with boot knife? Yeah. Okay. He leaves, and he makes a right-hand turn out of the... Uh, out have, of I, the have I made any money, or do I have to go all the way through? Yeah, yeah. The officiant, is gonna, he gives you 10 gold pieces for the two matches that you won. So, and then the guy that you wanted to... The guy that you wanted to follow, he takes a right-hand turn out of the tent, just kind of heading off back towards where the... Uh, where the, yeah, he's going back towards where the food and drink. As soon as I get my money, I would like to go out and follow him. Yeah. Uh, um, Matthew, we will come back to you. Well, <clears throat> I guess at this point I should figure out a way to make some money. As an eagle? <laughs> You're really good at a fishing challenge. I guess I had my... Make my way to an alleyway and transform back. Yeah, so you just, your feathers disappear, your arms come back, and a small child goes, ah! <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Oh, I used to love to hang out in alleys as a small oh, child, thank yeah. you very much. I've Notice around me. I mean, you're on the. You're, in an alleyway. Yeah, you're in an alleyway. <laughs> if you go straight forward, um, you'll be back on the road where the where the uh, food vendors and everything are. The road where they got to their argument. And if you go behind you, you're heading more towards uh, kind of the theater aspect of things. Mm.
guess I'll go back towards the festival and look for... Both of them are part of the festival. Well, towards all the shops. The yeah. vendors. So you make your way forward onto the road and, um, again, you're just kind of intersected with this, with this Loman. This Loman? I brushed past him. Like, like rudely? rudely, or just you? Sure. So you want to shoulder check him? Not entirely, but I'm just going to ignore him. I'm going to ignore his you. existence. I was trying to help you. Yeah. <laughs> Kim, as as you're walking, um, you're walking down the down the road with all the food vendors, and just out of nowhere, just kind of very rudely comes an elf just right in front of you, and just kind of puts you, halts you in your tracks a little bit, so you don't like fumble into him. He doesn't fumble into you. You don't lose any of your stuff, and it just keeps on going the other way. Whatever. Great night. So, I know it's a festival. I want to roll to see if anything's amiss. Just if anything's weird. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Is there anything going on other than the festival? I'm a goblin. I'm trying to find, like, the dirtiest of deeds. Are you still in shadow form? No. Okay. Um, give me an investigation check. 17 plus... 3, so 20. Yeah, so you are beginning to kind of notice just like just looking around and uh, you're just starting to notice that even though it is getting evening, there's like an ominous, an ominous in the sky. Like there should have been very visible stars and it's, just, and it's still daylight. Well, no, no, it's, it's just it's kind of just staying pitch black. And it doesn't seem to be ha like if you you can kind of see beyond like towards the other kind of towards other countries, and there are stars and it's just kind of like in this veil that there's just nothing. Okay, that's different. It's very different. What can I do here? Uh, are you still on the road with the food? By the way. Okay, so all three of you on the same road. I'd like to just ask around about the stars, you know, be like, why can't I see anything? Just ask, you know, food vendors or stall vendors or whoever. Okay. Um, you walk up and you ask a nearby stall vendor, and he takes his attention away from the cakes that he's, the sweet cakes he's currently um, baking long enough to look at the sky. And he's just kind of like, looks at you, he's like, they're right there. Hmm. Is there anything different about him, or does he just look normal? No, he's just a normal dog, but... But he can see him, and I cannot. He can see the stars, you cannot, correct. What is he wearing? Baker's clothes, he's got... Yeah, an apron. Yeah, pretty modest like clothes. Apron right? slam his head on the on the ground and go, Where are the where are the stars? <laughs> okay, give me a strength check. Fourteen. Fourteen? Yeah, so you grab the apron right around his groin area and pull him down and he just hits his chin on his counter and he says, They're right there. I'll just leave and go to try to Am I outside the Capitol? No, you're no, still you're in still it. in it. Where is the government like building? So, if we were looking at a map of of New Methos, where you all are, it's kind of in this front little area where most of the citizens and the minor people would have lived. And if you you would have to go a good distance straight down like the main street from where you are. I'm working so. my way down there. Okay. Do I have to roll or anything? No, no, no. But um, as you begin to work your way down this road. A, shuttle, a subtle rumbling in the ground. And we'll stop there with you, and we'll go to Matthew. And you, uh, p picking up at this point, you also feel the subtle rumble in the ground. I'm going to investigate. <laughs> in what way? Is there any 
way that I can try and figure out what's going on? Yeah, you can. I mean, there's several. That's why I said in what way. There's several ways you could you could take it. Like, are you investigating to know to see if you can know like why there's a tremor, like a natural way, a magical way? Uh, I'd like to detect it magically. Okay, give me an arcane check. That'd be a 21. 21? Um, you can't exactly pinpoint what's going on, but as you do the arcana check, you can tell that you are under the sway. You can tell that you are under the, sl the sway of a mass illusion spell. I feel like that is the the bald dude definitely just struck me as suspicious. Yes, but as now knowing that you're in this illusion spell, you're able to shake yourself out of it. And much like the goblin, for the first time, you notice that there are not star, stars in the sky overhead. Anything else? Is there any way I can pick up this trail again? No. The bald man. You can try, but it would be a disadvantage because you've got a, you've got the fact that the street's just covered in people, so any tracks would be very, very hard to discern. I can't detect magic because I was just under a disillusion. Well. So that's a cantrip. Well, do you have a detect magic spell on your sheet? Then no, you can't cast detect magic. Well, then I guess I can just be normal investigation. Well, we ain't getting nowhere with that. That's a four. Yeah, nothing. You, you're you're long away from being able to track this this guy down. It was almost a nat twenty, and then it moved for the last second when it hit my folder. That will bring us back to you, Jake. Well, obviously, I'm still looking for the, the man who stabbed me in the leg. Do I see him? Give me an investigation check. You kind of look around, and you don't immediately... You don't like, quite notice him, per se, but you do notice... Um, Kind of a little bit of spatters of blood on the ground, presumably from the boot knife that was connected to his boot. Yeah, they lead you up the road and into a small alleyway. Um, in this alleyway, you see the guy who boot knocked you being held up by the neck by a creature just seemingly made completely of shadow. It's got kind of goat looking um, shadow hooves and horns on its head, and it's holding him up as it snaps his neck and drops him to the ground. It looks to you, simultaneously you two who are in the, um, on the, on the food street, begin to feel, yeah, but you're still on the food street. You begin to feel a, as a rift opens in the sky, and from its shadow pours over the city. In front of you, respectively, Several similar shadow style demons appear on the street. But, yes, but that is a story for next time.